What's up guys, Joe with Odyssey Off-Road. We got these three behemoths lined up in front of you here. So if you're uh, new to the channel, we have two 2023 Polaris Scrambler XP1000Ss on either side. And then in the middle, we have a 2024, right Chris? 22. 22 XP1000S uh, Sportsman. So there are differences. They're both listed at the same price. And a lot of people have a lot of complaints that the Sportsman is at the, listed at the same price as the Scrambler and it doesn't get as good as shocks. But we're going to go over the differences between the two and kind of like a buyer's guide. So if you get contemplating on which one to get, uh, you're not sure if the Sportsman's actually worth the money and what you get extra for the lack of uh, upgraded shocks on the Scrambler. We're going to go over all that here. So stay tuned. So for starters, we'll talk about weight and the this is obviously heavier the sportsman is estimated dry weight from polaris is 970 pounds now the estimated dry weight on the scramblers is 881 pounds so you're talking about 90 pound difference right out of the box sportsman is heavier by 90 pounds but there's a lot of things it has that, that add to that weight that the scrambler doesn't have now obviously the scrambler is more oriented towards sporty riding uh, aggressive trail riding, uh, dune dune riding, stuff like that. You can do all that with the Sportsman, but it's it's got a couple compromises due to the weight, and it's got other features that are meant for more of an all-purpose vehicle. So we'll we'll show you the differences here. So to start with, the, the biggest complaint everybody always has, obviously, is the suspension. Why are they the same price when you get the premium Walker Evans adjustable shocks on the Scrambler? And on the Sportsman, you get these stupid pogo shocks. Everybody complains. Um, so I'll tell you, I've driven both. The Sportsman drives fairly similar. There are points you reach that you notice the difference in the shocks. Um, really high speed, uh, rough stuff. And jumps like landings, uh, big whoops, stuff like that. Obviously, a scrambler is going to eat that up a lot better. The Sportsman is a much plusher ride. Not that the Scrambler is not a plush ride because they're both very plush ride. Uh, super, super soft rides on both of them. But yet, the Scrambler is kind of hard to it's kind of hard to put your finger on. It's 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 plush, but yet firm at the same time. Um, I would say you get more a little bit more body roll in my opinion, on the Sportsman, and that's probably just due to the shocks. You get this, everything else is the same. So what you lose with the suspension also on the Sportsman is uh, an in one inch of suspension travel in the front. You got 11.6 um, inches of suspension travel in the front and 14 in the rear on this. On the Scrambler, you got 14 in the rear and 12 and a half in the front. So you lose an inch of suspension travel up front due to those shocks. Now, other huge striking differences. And this one here too, this is my brother's scrambler. My brother's got a scrambler. That's my scrambler. You can see a couple differences. He's got the headlights. We have videos out on that. And he's got the F, uh, HMF full exhaust and tune on his already. Mine's, mine's all stock. So other differences, you can tell just from looking at the rear two of the tires. So they use Duro power grips on both machines, but they're two different versions. The ones here on the Sportsman are a little bit more like the original Bighorns. Um, the tread depth isn't as deep either. You can see, I stick my, put my finger there. And then as opposed to the, the uh, Scrambler's got much taller lugs on the treads and a little bit different tread design. You also get a square tire setup on the Scrambler. So you run a 27 by nine front and rear, same, same size rim front and rear. So you can rotate the tires. On the Sportsman, you get a 14 inch rim. So you get a smaller sidewall on the tire and you get a wider rear tire. So this is 11 inch wide rear and nine inch wide front. So you can not be able to rotate them like you can on the Scrambler, but this is more built for multi-purpose. Again, uh, it comes with a hitch. These things can uh, recommended from the factory tow rating uh, 1,750 pounds. You can tow with this. So. The Scrambler does not, they do not provide a tow rating at all. Now, it's the same exact chassis, same exact motor, transmission, everything. I would imagine if you need to tow some stuff and you have, and you, you prefer the Scrambler, you can just get that tow hitch. You can put it right on there. It's going to, it's going to fit the same, the both the same frames. And you can see right there where it's attached. It's going to, it's going to bolt right up to the Scrambler. 
So you can do that. You can get it for the scrambler and tow some stuff around if, if that's what you want to do. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to, but they do not provide actual specifications. Cargo capacity, obviously you have cargo racks front and rear, and it's, I think it's rated at like 750 pounds of total cargo capacity uh, weight. Whereas the scramble is much lighter. I think it's like 30 pounds for the front rear rack and like 25 or 30 pounds for the front rack only. But that is, again, also because this is more focused towards being a sports sport riding machine. You know, it's, just, it's definitely single focus. It's not really a multi-focused machine where the sportsman is. So where all the rest of the weight comes into play, obviously the, t the rims are bigger. You have the racks. You have the bigger plastics on the sportsman. So let me show you the lighting here. So now, factory headlights, just halogen bulbs. You get regular plain Jane headlights on the Scrambler. My brother's got upgraded headlights. So I wanted to show you the mine. And on the Sportsman, you get full LEDs. Even the third headlight pod is LED. And if I shut the headlights off, you'll see you still get the LED daytime running lights on the pod and on the headlights. Whereas on the Scrambler, if I shut the headlights off, you got nothing. All right, you do get a light bar though, the Scrambler. And that switches right here. So a nice Pro Armor light bar. It does, it does throw a lot of light. So that is a difference. In terms of gauge clusters, they're the same. You get some different controls and you get three different modes on the Sportsman. You get work, standard, performance. And if you come over here on the Scrambler, you just get performance and standard. It's not meant for work, again. And that's the switch for your light bar. Uh, gauge cluster is the same, operates the same way. You do get these nice hand guards on the Scrambler. You don't get hand guards on that. Other differences, obviously, visually, you get these big heavy steel bumpers. So you get front and rear bumpers. These are solid bumpers. Uh, nice finish on them, like a crinkle powder coating. You get a winch. I believe it is a, I wanna say 3,500 pound winch. Yep, 3,500 pound Polaris winch. Now the Scrambler is pre-wired for it. You can get the winch kit from Polaris and, and hook it up, but it does not come with it, okay? So those are, those are some differences. Another big difference, and you can kind of tell looking down the sides, you see the seats are different on the Scrambler and the, and the Sportsman. Now, if you look at them quick, you probably don't notice the difference. And then there's the rear steel, steel bumper, center, cut, center exhaust on both, all three. That one's obviously got the aftermarket exhaust, but Tail lights are different too. Oh, you while we're back here. So you get a just a single plane tail light here on the on the scrambler. And on the sportsman you get dual tail lights and a, and the third brake light in the middle. The storage boxes have compartments. You get a nice big compartment here in the rear one. The front one's got a compartment too. Doesn't hold as much. That opens up like this. Okay, the benefit of this front cargo box here is you take this out and right underneath is all your wiring, your storage. Uh, underneath the storage bin is you get your wiring, your battery, all that stuff. On the Scrambler, same premise. You just pop these two latches. You take the whole hood off and everything's under there. There's just no storage. You just have this small rack up front, which again only holds about 30 pounds. So everything else is fairly similar. And we get to the seats, the ergonomics of it. When you're sitting on the Sportsman, the seat is so soft. I mean, you can see I'm not putting much pressure on how far into the seat I'm going. The seat is super, super soft. If you're all day trail riding, this thing is like literally sitting on a couch. Now, the Scrambler is no slouch. It's also super comfortable, very soft seat, but it's a little bit firmer. You can see I'm not going as far into it with my hands. And it's got a little kick up in the back, a little hump back here. I like that when I sit on it and I'm just cruising on the trail, I kind of sit... I, I tend to sit towards the back and I right to where I'm about to hit that hump. And it's a nice, comfortable seating position. You can also get up closer, tighter, 
so the front on it narrows down a little bit there the shifters are in a different location not so much in a different location but the scramblers you'll see comes up higher and out of the plastics whereas the sportsman it comes out of the side here and you can see on my scrambler this comes out of the top shifting feels about the same keys in a different location you have the keys on the side keys on the top you get a charging port for your uh, bat like a battery tender you can just plug it in right there if it's sitting in the garage or sitting in storage you put a battery tender on it and you have a 12 volt right there you also get all that on the scramblers in different locations you get 12 volt right there and you get the battery tender here in the front uh, i believe it's on this side yep right here on the front so you can hook up a battery tender to it right there so you know, there's quite a bit of difference. I mean, I think that what they did was when they took the shocks away, the good shocks away from the sportsman, and they didn't change the price, everybody freaked out. But what they did is they didn't just give you LED headlights. I mean, you got you got full steel bumpers. You got better tow capacity. You got um, rated anyway. You have 3,500-pound winch, cargo. You get a lot different stuff on this than you do on that. They're just two different animals. But at the same time, they're very similar as well. Same chassis, same motor, same transmission. But everything around it is a little different. Suspension, A-arms, geometry is all the same. Again, you lose an inch of suspension travel in the front. I would tell you, I don't, I don't really notice that so much. Um, trail riding the two back to back. Uh, and going down some hill descents, rutted out hill descents on both. You don't really notice that as much. You tend to notice it more on higher, higher paced trails. Um, big hits, big G outs, uh, whoops, stuff like that. That's when the that's when the scrambler starts shining with the better shocks. But you know, you're not you're not getting you're not sacrificing. I don't I don't think in my opinion. A lot of people beg to differ, and some people may may differ with my opinion in the comments. They're both very expensive machines at seventeen seven nine nine. You know, MSRP. Um, that's before you know, freight tax, all that stuff. So you're looking at like 20 grand out the door if you want one of these. And they're expensive machines, no two ways about it. But you do get, they are two, two different packages. Everybody likes to put them in the same category, but they're really not. This is a machine that's built for work and fun. And this machine is built for just fun. So that's why they're, they're packaged different. They have different things they offer for that, for that money. So what would you, if you put standard shocks on the scrambler and you didn't add anything to it, that would significantly decrease the value of the scrambler. But you get a lot of extra stuff on the sportsman. So I think the offset you get is worthwhile. Uh, it, they, I don't think they need to lower the price on the sportsman because you get if they lower the price on the sportsman, you're not going to get the LED lights. You're not going to get the bumper. You're not going to get the winch and all that stuff. So you get all that stuff in place of the suspension. It's pick your poison. Whatever you want to do. If you're going to do, be doing a lot of work around the yard, around the property, on the farm, the ranch... And then you're also going to be a weekend warrior and tear it up on the trails with your buddies. This is a great machine for that. It'll, it'll do everything you need. And you can always upgrade the shocks if that really is something that bothers you. You can even get a set of Elkas. Elka makes shocks for these things. Now, if you were a guy at just trail rides, you know, do any work with it or anything like that, like somebody like myself, Scrambler's for you. You need to get a little more mud coverage on the Sportsman. But I will tell you, it's not too bad. I was on, on my way over here to my brother's house. I drove the scrambler here. You can see mine's a little dirty. Um, there was we had some heavy rain the other day, and some there was some there was some mud puddles, and the mud does shoot up the side. But the machine's so wide that you're not getting hit. Like I, I was perfectly clean where my legs were. So the mud protection is not bad. The the uh, can am Renegade's mud protection is way worse than the Scrambler. The Scrambler is significantly better coverage than the uh, Renegade, if, if that's a concern of yours. But I already have a video out comparing the Scrambler and the Renegade. So I told you guys we would compare these two side by side. So those are kind of the specs. Those are what you get. Those are the goods and the bads of them all. Um, and, you know, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you have one of these machines? What do you like about them? What do you dislike about them? Which one are you in the market for? Or have you, were you undecided until you've seen this video? Has this video helped you make your decision? Let me know in the comments below. 
If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Smash that thumbs up button on your way out if you like the video. And uh, we will see you guys on the next one. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. On Instagram, we're Odyssey underscore Offroad. And then Odyssey Offroad on Facebook. But again, this is Joe with Odyssey Offroad. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. We will see you on the next one.